Dobson and that obviously was my arrangement of the Mission Impossible loop and um, what follows now is a tutorial starting with a brief tutorial on how to set your looper to 5-4 time which you need to do for this one thank you now this is how you do it with this model which is a Boss RC20XL obviously now this is in default position of 4 Push this tempo pedal down, tap tempo pedal down, hold it. So it's flashing now, tap it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Wait a little bit, it should start flashing again. One, two, three, four, five, one. And it's in fives. So, the first loop. Before you do anything else, you're going to need to get the rhythm right, and you count it like this. I'm just going to play a G for the first three of five beats. One and two and three, four, five. One and two and three. Now on the fourth and fifth beat, I add a B flat to a C like this. One and two and three, four, five. And the second one, one and two and three, F, F sharp. I'll do it in frets. Third fret, sixth string, one and two and three. First fret, fifth, third fret, fifth, third fret, sixth string again. First fret, sixth, second fret, sixth. Now what I did on the video is I made the rhythm a bit more interesting by going like, by muting it on the quavers like this. One and two and three, four. Five, one and two and three and four, five. So it, the best way to do that, I'm sure you already know this, but I'm just going to remind any of you who need to know. Just lift your finger off the neck, but not off the string to correct the mute. And my pick direction always changing down, up, down. So that's the first part. Now, I do seven of those. And on the seventh one, 
I need to move up chromatically onto the same riff on the fifth string like this. So I'll do the last one. Then one, two, three on the fifth string. Do the same riff on C on the fifth string. It's exactly the same. And then you go back to the G the same way on the sixth string. And then I'm moving up to D like this. That's three, four, five on the sixth, fifth, fifth string. I'll do that again. One and two and three, four, five. So you see what I did there? I went to the third fret of the fourth string, to the fifth fret of the fourth string, to the F to the G. One and two and three, four, five, one. Rest, 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 rest. And then you click the loop pedal for the next loop. Okay, the second loop, or the main tune if you like. Pull off from the sixth fret to the third fret, from the B flat to the G on the first string. And then I've gone to the D, which is the third fret, the second string. Slightly tricky this now, because we have to jump across the sixth fret, the third. So if your pinky's bobbins, you need to practice. Right, and then we do that again, then we go down chromatically. To the fifth fret, the third, then you play the third fret, the third, and slide up to the fifth. Now all I'm doing now is I'm doubling up the, the bass riff by going an octave higher, which is the fifth fret of the fourth string, to the third fret of the third, to the fifth fret of the third, and then move chromatically up. Now, the next part, slightly harder rhythmically, so I need a separate bit for that. So the second riff, if you like, starts on the second beat, the bar. So we pull off, from the third fret of the third string to the open third string. I'm going to the sixth fret of the second, I do the same thing again. Rest, two, three, four, five, one fret lower on the second string, the fifth. One, two, three, four, five, then one and slide down from the fourth fret to the third. The problem with this is the rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, rest. Two, three, four, five, rest. Two, three, four, five, on the beat. One, two, three, on the first beat, the bar rather that last bit. Now the same riff, but four on C this time. So we have to pull off from the E flat, which is fourth fret of the second string to the first fret of the second string. Open third, three, four, five, same again. Chromatically down to the 4th fret of the 4th string, pull off again. Now the 3rd fret of the 4th string and then slide up from the 1st fret to the 3rd fret. And then we're going to repeat the 2nd strain. Now we're on to the 3rd overdub. All I did here is I just put a bit of room in it. And when I doubled up previously, I'm going to do it an octave higher now. So I've got a G on the third, 12th fret of the third string. To 11th fret of the second. To 13th fret of the second. And then chromatically up from the F. To 10, 11, 12 on the third. F, F sharp, G. So I did with that. Um, now, the horn part, which um, is on the orchestral version, I quite like this, so that's why I put it in. Um, the rhythm is really difficult to get, you need to listen, because it's a, it's a cross rhythm. It seems to be three beats in the bar almost, three over five, which is really hard to explain. You just have to feel it, and that's, I know that's a bit of a bobbins explanation, but that's only, there's no way of counting it really. And you go like this. 
So that is going over the last second strain of the G riff. And I'm going seven, six, slide up on the third string. One. Okay. Now on the video, I look like a bit of a headless chicken at this point because I'm thinking, what am I going to do now? And I realise that I've got to put a little bit more rhythm over the bits where I wasn't playing the rhythm before. So that's why I'm sort of faffing about a bit. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to do the ending now. So the ending, right, is a power chord from F to G. I did a root four like this. So obviously what I need to do there is stop the looper at the point of the overdub, at the point of return of the actual loop, and just try and time it. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. Um, as you stop the looper. Of course you can do it a not too like this you want. Whichever you prefer. Power chords. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't an impossible mission for you if you've got that far in this video you're watching me now you must have liked it so um please subscribe to my channel thank you